good. I think what is missing, however, is uh, exactly the advice we were talking about, right? So we say at the start of that particular month. So we need to count that right because, uh, for example, recruits mature into apprentice, right? So uh, if you are not very specific about the position in time in the month, are you talking about at the start or at the end? And then do you count at the end as, as uh, the same as the start of the next month and all that? So, so we all got that figure out in the financial application example. Uh, we are very specific. We say at the start of the month. And also second bullet point, start of the month is the same as end of the previous month. They are just different word choices describing the same logical moment. They are equivalent. So we'll pepper our definitions of the this decision variables with a bunch of at the start of, right? So just remind ourselves. Then it is absolutely clear what we are talking about. At the start of month uh, June, we have zero recruits. Okay, so again, these are little, little things that will help you out in thinking through the logic of the model uh, correctly in line with what is what is uh, uh, described to us as the problem right okay so for the part on wages the total wage cost is very simple right whenever we see a p we multiply it by 3000 because production workers are paid the same for the three months at the same rate uh, moment we see a t 3003 and moment we see a R, 2002, or moment we see A, we have 2006. And we minimize the total costs, right? So think about it again. Suppose if solver says uh, first month, uh, zero recruits, then we will have 2002 multiplied by zero and it's okay, right? Second month, uh, we have five recruits. So five recruits times 2002. So it will contribute to the overall cost for these three months uh, planning. Now, let's take a look at the first month's production. In the first month, we will produce uh, 0.6 of a wing if we have one production worker. So we have P1 production workers. This can be 5, 10, 20, we don't know. Multiply by 0.6 right <laughs> likewise in the first month we have trainers we have r the recruits but no apprentices in total we will get this quantity of wings being done all right and we need to supply 20. now if if we put equal sign here this is very important if we put equal sign here then two things happen, right? One is that from the modeling perspective, we are expressing the, the scenario or the desire that um, whatever we produce is just enough. In fact, no more. Even if you can produce more, don't produce. It says equal. So give me enough production workers, trainers, recruits, such that I get exactly 20 weeks. Now, why do we need to do that? There's no need to do that actually, right? Because it is not completely against any rules to overproduce unless the company says no. When we overproduce, it means that in the first month, although we need to produce 20 for delivery immediately, we may produce 22, 25, 30. Why? Well, because the excess can be uh, delivered in compliance with the orders in the following months because the orders are no. If the for the fourth month, the fifth month and beyond, we have no idea of the demand, then perhaps we shouldn't. But it is clear that we can overproduce. So when we put greater than equal to instead of equal to, we are expressing or, or allowing the solver to find uh, the overproduction strategy, the optimal overproduction strategy. 
when we say overproduce, is it to produce 21, 22, 23, 25, 30? All right, so the deployment schedule uh, for hiring recruits and trainers and all that for the subsequent months will also be altered if the overproduction schedule is uh, explored. So find us your telling solver when you write uh, greater than, equal to, give us the optimal overproduction strategy. Tell us how many to produce, right? Then we can find out. Now, the second point when we write equal sign is this. I've gone through the meaning, the semantics of uh, what you imply when you tell the model equal, right? Maybe we shouldn't write equal. But when you write equal, another potential problem is this. Because the left-hand side is fractional, yeah, and the workers will have to be integers, it is possible that the left-hand side ends up with 20.29 and it will never be equated with an integer 20. Can you see that? Yeah. So if we multiply integer by a decimal place number, very likely, although chances happen that all the combinations can end up being integer, that's more like a rarity than the norm, right? So in most cases, left-hand side will be a decimal place number, right-hand side is forced to be an integer, and you want them to be equal. Which means this constraint can never be satisfied by solver, and in all likelihood, when you click solver, you'll find that solver says there's no answer. <laughs> there's no answer. And, and that's just because of the decimal place uh, playing a trick on the equality part. So to avoid that, uh, it is actually important, therefore, for us to uh, allow, right, for the, for the numbers to be decimal. So, uh, oh, sorry, rather not be strictly adhering to the right-hand side. And so we need this uh, 20 actually uh, it, to be greater or equal to 20 rather than strictly equal to 20. Okay, now, so if the left hand side after solving turns out to give us a number such as 22, okay, then we say using the terms that we have learned, we say that there is an X, uh, there's, there's a surplus of two wings because left minus right, we get two. So there's a surplus of two wings. So for the month of April, we can definitely deliver the order and we have two uh, wings in excess. And we need not right, produce that those two wings in satisfaction of the required 24, I think, wings that is needed in May. Yeah, so what happens then is that uh, this number, all right, this number you see is the entire left hand side copy, right? Okay, for the second month, we start with this number, right, which has already got 20 wings delivered, plus the production that is new in second month. This part we understand, right? All the decision variables involving suffix two. So all these will be new wings produced in the second month. The first expression minus 20, the first expression minus 20 will be the leftover excess from the previous month, which is two in my given example. Suppose first month we have 22 wings, then this expression minus 20 will give us two, right? And plus the new wings that we make in the second month should be greater than or equal to 24, the requirement for the second month's delivery. So far so good, right? And therefore you see why we can move the 20 from the left hand side, minus 20, and bring it across to the right to give us 20 plus 24. So we get 44. All right, so it is correct in the sense of taking into account the excess or the surplus produced in the previous month. Likewise, in the third month, 
we want to express the fact that the first month's excess, all right, minus 20, uh, would have contributed to second month, or maybe not. Maybe Solver decided to keep the two wings there because uh, third month we have a lot of wings and we need to buckle up, right? So the first month's two wings is to be kept for delivery in the third month, right? So who knows? So we have to leave that possible as possibility. And so we say that the excess in the first month plus the excess in the second month, all right, this bracket, minus 24, all right, plus whatever is being produced in the third month, all the decision variables having suffix three must be greater than or equal to 30. The required number of wings uh, in the third month as stated in the original requirement. Yeah. So therefore, once we wrote down all these expressions, but with multiple constants, we can group the constants together on the right hand side to give us 74 like this. Okay, that's why we have this very longish uh, left hand side, but right hand side looks like a number that we haven't seen before, but it's just due to the accounting for the number of excess weeks. All right, so we have um, accounted for the production of wings to deliver in the relevant months. But what about the promotion aspects, right? Because P1, P2, P3, T1, T2, and all the R's and the A's, they are all somewhat connected and we need to take care of those. Now, um, let's look at the trainers and the producers. Uh, here, what this says is, essentially, uh, we can put all the negative variables on one side, then we can see uh, more clearly right, what they are trying to say. It's trying to say that the second month uh, producers and trainers, in other words, the, the second month's fully qualified workers is made up of uh, the sum total of the first month's fully qualified workers. If in the first month there had been any apprentice, then that apprentice after one more month of working and familiarization with the work will get pro uh, promoted to fully qualified worker, right? But we don't have A1. A1 is always zero. So that's why we have this. But in the third uh, month, our P3, right? Might be easier if we write uh, the twos here. So the ones get promoted, the P and T in the ones get promoted into twos. The P3 gets promotion from P2 plus T2, right? Plus A2 because apprentices uh, existing in the second month will get promoted to production workers in the third month. But uh, apprentices could have been promoted to trainers, right? Except in the third month, we don't have trainers. So we are clear that we do not need P3 plus T3 here. Number of apprentices in a month must equal to the number of recruits in the previous month because they get promoted. Of course, this assumes that this assumes that the recruits don't resign. Right? This assumes that the recruits uh, are all passing the exams. They don't fail. They, they are not fired. Yeah, or they don't quit. Okay, so then this assumption is safe. Uh, number of apprentices in the third month will be the same as the number of recruits in the second month. So I think this part is quite easy to understand. So we're using this equal sign now, um, more like an assignment, right? This gets uh, moved to that. But if you recall our financial application discussion, we were saying, that um, if we have $20 million, we use the equal sign as a form of splitting the right-hand side resource, $20 million, into three variables, three channels, three sources for investments, 